Yes, indeed, time to create a classic Christmas feast. And if you're wanting something that's traditional with a bit of a turn up, try your hand at this delicious spread. Rack of lamb with tangy poached pears and roasted Brussels sprouts. 10 minutes of prep work and you are done. No hours in the kitchen, because we don't want that, Chef Clem. We don't want that. Ain't don't want no time in the kitchen on Christmas Eve or Christmas <laughs> Day. We want to be enjoying life with our family. Man. Exactly. So this one, super easy to prepare, but it's keeping classic. And this is, this is lovely classic flavors. It's mm. simple, and I like the idea of a, a roasted Brussels sprout, because I think it brings out a nuttiness and a mm. beautiful flavor to it. Agreed. Don't be boiling your sprouts, yo. Stop boiling your Don't sprouts. Don't boil your sprouts. <laughs> Don't do okay, it. Okay, it starts right. with a beautiful rack of lamb. But I'm gonna need you up as well. So okay. while I'm talking, I need you to, to peel some pears for me. I can do it. And for this recipe, you don't want to have pears that are too soft, too mealy. Okay. They've got to have a little bit of texture. A, a, bit, of, a bit of backbone, okay, okay cool. Okay, cool, so you're doing that. Cool, I've I'm got doing that. beautiful free range lamb, South African, of course. Best and lamb in the world, hey? Best lamb in the world, honestly. Okay, cool. So, it's been vacuum packed already. Spices are on there, so you know it's been taking in all the flavor. Absorbed yeah. in, beautiful. Like I said, it's free range, and okay. it's free from routine antibiotics and growth stimulants. This is lamb, just lamb. It's just lamb, lamb netsua, sauce. And what more do you need? Okay, so this is gonna be so good. I also love the way that a rack of lamb cooks up on a braai. Mm. It just, I mean, I feel like it's perfectly, like when mother, when God created lamb, it was like, ah, I'm gonna help them out. Yeah. So when you make a rack of lamb on the braai, if you don't want to have too much direct heat on the actual meat itself, because the, the, the rack's got quite a bit of delicate meat on there. Yeah. So all you got to do is literally, it comes with its own little pedestal. So you just like stand it up on the bone. Oh, wow, check on it the out. It's perfectly fine. So it cooks the meat and leaves the delicate bits to cook more slowly. I love that. Exactly. So same thing in the oven. If you want to stand it up in the oven, do, do exactly that. Then I'm going to add some extra flavor. All right. With some onions. Honestly, onions. Like onions, you go through so many onions during the festive season. Because it's in everything. It's there for the the, the whole family. The whole really. family. Yeah. So this one, skins and all. The skins actually give it like a nice color as well for the little stock that's going to render out of it. Now, I'm not supposed to add any of the liquid to this, but I'm going to add a little bit. So while it cooks, <laughs> it's going to steam. Some of the, the lamb drippings are going to end up mixing Ooh. with the liquid and the onions. You're going to have like a bit of a little gravy to go with it. It's going to be a little gravy party. This is oh, verju. Mm. You could use normal red wine. You could use white wine. Whatever wine you want to do, we're going to poach our pears. So all you're going to do is get it into a pot. And we're going to sweeten sure, it slightly. It's an exciting sound, eh? You know, a lot of people, when they heard that, were like, what? Hey. hey. Sorry, what? Hey. Christmas, what? OK. Christmas Eve. Sugar going in. Star in these. You can add some cinnamon if you want as well. OK. These pears are looking amazing. What you want to do is also keep your pears whole. You're going to poach them whole. I was going to ask. More, mm. They look more beautiful that way. When you cut it, like, at the end, ah, you can see the way that the colors, like, okay. run through it. So that's going to go in. Another one for you. Nice, G, nice. Okay. Thank you. So, we're going to make a cartouche. When was the last time you made a cartouche? Oh, man? you know, I was, I was thinking about making a cartouche last week, but I just didn't have the time. You didn't have the time. I I'm didn't gonna have help the time, you. please. I'm going to help you. Okay, so, if you don't have... Oh, this recipe, you've got to slowly cook your pears, but also reduce the liquid that's in there. So you can't put a lid on it, because that's just going to trap in all that moisture. Uh -huh into the cartouche. Ah. Okay, a piece of baking paper, and it's a square or square-ish, it doesn't really matter. You can make a, what would seem like a type of triangle. Okay, it would seem. Would it seem would seem that, but... It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> just get as close to a triangle shape as possible. And then just keep on, find your little middle point, and just keep on folding, okay? Okay. This is, guys, this is like the, what they teach you in like chef school in the first week of being there. Really? Yeah. So this, this is when you know, okay. This is when you know. So. You're going to take your little piece of paper, just okay. hold it over the pot so you get an idea of the size that you're going to need. Okay. And exactly where it meets the inside, we're going to snip it there. And we've got this perfect little round oh, piece of paper. Out. That's going to go over our pot and then act like a lid, but not Beautiful. too much it's, that it doesn't allow some of the it moisture to escape. some of the moisture to escape. I love that. Make we, a we made ourselves a cartouche, Make man. yourself a cartouche. Okay, on the heat, don't fiddle with it. Let okay. it just go. Then another trick, when they are just tender, like poke it through the bottom with a knife. Okay. If it just goes through easily, you're good. You're done. Take it off the heat, but let it, let it cool in that liquid. It's going to take on so let much it, more flavor. Let it absorb. OK, beautiful. Okay. Brussels. Guys, let's just talk about the public service announcement. <laughs> don't boil your Brussels sprouts, though. So Please much don't do it, man. The appeal of the Brussels sprout is in, like, the sweetness and the texture. It's, there's a nuttiness that yeah. comes through. For me, if it's done right, it, it, it's, it's the perfect sounding board for good meat 
And obviously, I'm going to be heading to the UK, hopefully, later today. And there they do, it's sort of standard. Brussels sprouts with everything when it's Christmas, giant Yorkshire puddings and Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. sprouts. They absolutely love it. And you've got to roast it, man. Don't, roast don't it. Play, play around. Roast it. So what, what I do is, you've obviously got the bottom, the stalk, the base. First of all, can we marvel at how it looks like a miniature cabbage? I mean, Let's just take a moment is... to appreciate how cute a Brussels sprout actually is. How can you not like Brussels hey, sprouts? That's, a, that's a sweet no little sense. thing, man. Okay. okay. So what you need is you want to keep that bottom base in. You don't want to cut through that or break it. That's okay, going to so hold it together. Keep the flower together. Yeah. Essentially. So you go through the middle. So you still got the support structure at the bottom. Okay. Then what I always do is a little bit of butter in a roasting tin, mm -hmm. and you line them, cut down, side down, down, down. And make sure, okay. okay. If you've got an oven that has a bottom and a top element, you want to put both on. Sure. So it gets heat from the bottom, heat from the top, and when you turn it around, it's going to have the most beautiful lacquered, nice like it's golden just brown so delicious. Finish. Yeah. Beautiful. The outside's going to be crispy as well. But here's another thing: you can't roast them for too long, or else it's going to taste super. Super yeah. charry. Mm. You, yeah, so what you're looking for is that beautiful, I think it's like a 20 minute mark at okay. like 180 and you should be good. A little bit of olive oil on them is all you're going to need as well. So just a tiny bit of char, but you don't want to kind of go too far. You don't, don't push want to it take too it far. too far. Okay. Okay, so what happens is, like I said, our poached pears, they cool off in the liquid. You're going to slice them in half and reveal oh. the way that the colors almost they like. They actually do look so much better when you keep them whole yeah. like that. I get you. It's like a beautiful ombre as well, mm. the way that it gets into the pear. Those roasted onions take on the flavor of, of the lamb and of that sauce, that's gonna be amazing. And then you've got the beautiful pink lamb. Here's another thing. If you're worried about doing too much on the day, you can roast your lamb to the point of being like medium. Uh -huh. Let it cool on the counter before it goes into the fridge. On the day, <laughs> back, <laughs> yeah. Or take okay. it outside of the bride, you get that last little bit of flavor. Done. Are you doing Christmas on the bry, Brew? Because I have a feeling that, because that, you've been speaking a lot about the bry. Are I'm you, doing. Are you getting amped for? My preparation is in the kitchen today, and tomorrow everything else is going to be finished outside on the bry. Oh, good man. Get outside. It's going to be a beautiful day. A little overcast, but I mean, hey, it's going to be perfect weather. So get outside this festive season. What are you making for your festive Okay, plate? okay. Got to go gammon. So we made a beautiful chipotle pineapple gammon on the mm, show. We did. Oh, that's already, my gammon's already cooking. Like I left this Boom. morning cooking. Again, as much as you can do today, do it. Trifle, tongue. To the people out there that don't like tongue, someone's making it wrong for you. I love tongue. Also doing a smoked tongue. Getting creative, like switching up the recipes. Obviously, like I said, peppermint tart has got to be there. You've got to have your trifle. That's got it. there. But I mean, again, we kept the recipes nice and simple so everybody can just enjoy it, spend time I know, together. it's not hours of a roast. It's quick, it's simple. It's all about harnessing the best of the flavors that are available. And to be quite honest, I mean, most of what you have done over this last week, we can just walk into store, buy it, and prepare it in less than an hour. Absolutely, that was our aim, to give you a proper festive shopping guide so you know exactly what to get when you walk in and keep it simple. Man, I'm just imagining the smells in Chef Clem's house right now. If you want to recreate this festive feast, this beautiful poached pear rack of lamb, you can go to Woolworths.co.za and get all of the, in fact, a lot of culinary inspiration. Beautiful. That's a nice side of meat, eh? That's a nice...